Uh, hi guys, my name is Engineer Ephraim De La Serna of Integrated Maritime. Now we're going to continue. This is episode 2 regarding... Emer uh, we're going to run now the simulator from a cold ship condition. So we will try to discuss and tackle as much many modules. So emergency generators is under module 78. So we're going to discuss that one. So what's an emergency generator? So an emergency generator is a small separate generator which supplies the electric power for emergencies load in the event of main power supply failure, meaning it's just a backup generator. It's located outside the main and auxiliary machineries and not forward of the collision bucket as requirements for SOLAS, meaning that uh, it should be outside the main engine, the whole engine room area, and it should not be on the collision bucket or forward part of the, the forward part of the, the forward part of, of the forward part of the vessel because if there will be emergencies this this can be easily be damaged okay uh it has its own switchboard near the vicinity so it's inside that specific room is provided with independent means of automatically starting by air battery or hydraulic to ensure immediate running up to the following the main power failure repeated starts for at least three times and further attempts in the board exam they they this went out like how many starts does a repeat starts for a generator if it is air but on hydraulic pressure it's you can pump it it's, it's using hydraulic pump and further attempts can be made within 30 minutes meaning if you're using air you can you have an emergency air compressor inside that one so you have 30 minutes left so that's a port state requirement now let's now let's check with 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 the Kongsberg system so the Kongsberg system has two two systems of starting. One is start air battery and the other one is a hydraulic accumulator. So the, <clears throat> the start air battery is using the 24 volts, the 24 volts battery, which is supplied on the emergency switchboard. And hydraulic accumulator pressure. This one has a start air battery, but um, usually electricians use a hydrometer on testing the start the, the battery start. The battery and the hydraulic accumulator is just an ordinary pump where you pump the you just pump it no? so there's a switch on button here <clears throat> this is the accumulator so hydraulic pressure with an oil reservoir and this is called the starter <clears throat> hydraulic starter okay let's continue here now <clears throat> It should be adequate and independent supply for fuel with a flash point of not less than 43 degrees, a requirement of SOLAS, because um, when it's outside, it should be well ventilated uh, to prevent any forms of fire. Must be able to start in cold conditions up to zero degrees, meaning that uh, the radiators of this one, if you have a different system of cooling, they put, a, we call that anti-freeze, anti-freeze, so... The cooling system of the generator has been has, has a anti-freeze on it and called jcw system must be treated with ac anti-freeze agents and heating arrangement as provided so everything in the jacket cooling has been insulated and one thing more is that when the tanks as much as possible fill it into 90 percent or probably 90 to 85 percent because the the higher the the higher the void of the tank or meaning the space of the tank there is a possibility for moisture, meaning since it's outside of the area, uh, there are specific heaters on the room, but <clears throat> one thing is for sure that, is that you have to make it on the emergency generator, on the tank of the emergency generator, almost full. If, if possible, 95, 90%. So that um, in Solas is only 3% for expansion, but... Um, on these specific tanks, the, the reason that you're putting that one on a high level is because the it's because of moisture. When moisture hits the tank, water is accumulated on the side of the tank, it goes down, then eventually you will be having problems of starting the generator because water will go inside the engine. So that's one point to, to look up. And <clears throat> so emergency generators are tested every Saturday. So I just got this one from Marine Insight. So, uh, but eventually we're doing this one on board every Saturday. We test the emergency generators. Um, 
before arrival, uh, the 12 hours requirements from Regulation 5, I think it's Chapter 5, Regulation 26, that you start with the steering gears, emergency equipments, and everything. The air battle pressed up or starter battle charge at all time. So that's being checked daily by the electrician during the watch. Um, change over the selector switch to local before and make sure that the breaker switch starting and interlock between engine room switchboard and prevent to prevent to provide to prevent simultaneous closure of both breaker. <clears throat> now <clears throat> the simulator. So what are the parts of this emergency generator in Kongsberg? So you have an hydraulic accumulator here. That's a hand pump. You have the local control here. So in the emergency control, you can auto start it. When you press auto, automatically when it's connected to the main bus bar, it will start the emergency generator in a few seconds. So later I will discuss to you on how many seconds must an emergency generator based on regulations, it will kick in, okay? So let's switch here. I know there's some regulation here. So let's just check first on what you will do. During testing, check check frequency, voltage, ampere, um, fuel tanks, always check to ensure adequate level. That's what I told you. Air filters for generators regularly cleaned, required tools and spare spares keep in the container. So on, on board, there must be a separate box for the, the spare parts, the tools that being required for the emergency generator. And again, it should not be removed there in the room. Emergency light for this room should always be checked because during the conduct of emergency, there will be problems when, when the light of the emergency room is not lit. So that, that's, gonna, that's gonna pose a very big problem. So, <clears throat> um, Let's check first with the regulation zone before we go with the switchboard there. I will check first. Mm. Checking now the regulation. Yeah, here. Requirements for the requirements and regulations for emergency power sources on ship. All passenger and cargo vessels shall be provided with emergency source of electrical power for essential services under emergency conditions. So meaning it should be it should be very, very uh, it should have a backup generator. So next is emergency source of generator batteries must be complied with the rules, meaning it's a standard battery or or the sources must be required. Emergency sources must be installed in positions that they are unlikely to be damaged or affected by any incident which cost the main cost to main power. So meaning it should be in a separate room, separate emergency. Emergency it's it's, it's separated from the whole engine room. So emergency source of power should be capable of operating with a list of twenty two and one half degrees Celsius with a trim of ten degrees. Meaning um uh, when, for example, if, if I'm a car carrier, if I list around 22 degrees, it still can run. I mean, that's why the, that's one of the key reasons that why you have to fill up the emergency generator at a very high level. So it can trim up um, from from all the movements of the vessel. So it must be listing. It, this is a requirement for um, SOLAS. And it's also a requirement for DNV. So it's being tested. So... Uh, so that it will not have a, it will not block out emergency generators which switchboard is located in the compartment which is outside and away from the main control this is what i've discussed earlier for batteries the above rules applied and must not be fitted with the same place as an emergency switchboard meaning because batteries are very very volatile and they can explode so batteries are situated mostly outside there in a cold compartment in a well ventilated area Okay. Okay. On passenger ships, emergency generator shall be automatically started and connected within forty-five seconds. Meaning, um, in a period of forty-five seconds, the forty-five seconds on on board is very very long. So, um, especially when when you're maneuvering, but there's a specific timer there where you can adjust how many seconds will the emergency generator. It's called the cut-in time. So we count that one on board. We usually go for four. 10 to 14 seconds that's why we we simultaneously check but on the regulations it's only 45 seconds that's a minimum 
that's the the maximum number of 45 seconds but the faster your generator cuts in the better the better the better retrieval of power so very important capable of su supplying simultaneously at least the following service for a period of 36 hours meaning that the tank um with full power the tank the the capacity of the tank is able to to supply the passenger ship around 36 hours emergency lightning it will light all alleyways no? okay let's go to fire detection alarm systems internal communication equipment daylight signal navigation equipment let's check that one in the panel board so meaning when you start the generator the generator is capable of all the switchboard so uh i would just like to correct some of, of, of what's being taught that you have to select what's being started on the emergency switchboard actually you can switch on all because the, the generator is capable enough to run that specific um, electrical requirements okay a set of automatically connected emergency batteries must be capable of carrying certain essential services for a period of 30 minutes meaning um, batteries must be capable of carrying certain essential period for a period of 30 minutes emergency light navigation light so there's a backup battery requirements for emergency power sources so that's another thing uh, daylight signaling lamps sick ships whistles internal communications equipment so there is a separate battery just for this one because when it block out it automatic this emergency power source will come in the emergency just to just to light up navigational lights that's connected to the bridge okay on cargo ships okay it's just the same thing with a passenger vessel it's 45 seconds still but um with a lower essential service time of 18 hours same thing with the emergency lights again the difference between a passenger vessel and a cargo vessel is just the time so as you can see here on the regulations of solas let's check on a passenger vessel it's 36 hours on a passenger vessel it's only 18 hours okay so that's one key point same thing okay rules and regulations for batteries when batteries emergency sources for electrical power is an accumulator battery it shall be capable of carrying loads without recharging the battery voltage through the discharge period must be maintained within 12 percent above or below its nominal voltage meaning when electricians or we as engineers check that specific uh check that specific battery it should be 12 percent it should not be less than 12 to 12 percent of its nominal voltage so as you can see here this one is okay this one is okay because uh if you multiply 24 volts times 0.12 that's around this is this is quite okay battery systems automatically connected upon loss of main power so meaning it should be switched in batteries are required for transitional powers for a period of 30 minutes also fire detection emergency lighting navigation lights and everything okay now now we're going to start the generator i will go here and first on an what are the parts of the emergency generator it's just a typical diesel generator it has a cooling it has cooling water it has fuel oil it has lubricating oil and and it has a air a start start air system so the first thing to do is ensure that the battery voltage is correct meaning that the but the 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 battery is is connected to the start air battery so as you can see i have already charged my hydraulic accumulator here so i'm going to test it test it for hydraulic starting and the startup battery next is uh you have an engine control to check if it is auto manual start stop test one or test two you can you can test that one you have a uh, power uh how much how much kilowatt is being generated so the things to be ensure you should ensure is that the cooling water make up so this is where we put antifreeze so i think um, we can uh you may you put the makeup water this is a radiator type system a radiator heat exchanger so 
if the level goes down you charge up using this bug you can open that one and close it so as you can see it increases then you have uh, the meaning of this one is this is a touch pump the, the the cooling water is attached to the generator so it's cool it cools the loop oil cooler it cools the main engine and so so the radiator cools the loop oil and it also cools the the system in the generator next the loop oil the sump tank it, this is where you open or close once there has uh once there is an alarm there you should check also then same thing the loop oil pump is an attached pump if you wanted to drain the loop oil you just open this one and close that so it's controlled also with a thermostat with a duplex filter and it goes back to that so um this emergency if if you click here on the data if you click that specific column there you will see that the data of the emergency generator meaning that the speed of generate the speed of the generator is 1800 rpm with a 250 kilovolt kilowatt 280 kilovolt ampere 440 volts 60 hertz and a power factor of 0.9 okay so that's what's we can discuss late, later on, the, on what's the power factor the kva but let's start first in running the emergency generator so we have a turbocharger and a blower here it's also the blower is also attached to the emergency generator so meaning if you have seen an emergency generator if it has like this this is an attach pump so the first thing to do is as i have said as much as possible in the makeup you on the service tank you have to make it as much as possible on a on a full scale so i will just have to put it on 90 percent so that's good enough that's 90 percent then this one it's a touch it's, it's called the lift pump so when it starts it transfers to the diesel oil okay tank. i just make up the service tank so this is the data uh it depends on the design of the of the emergency generator but mostly uh, this is the it's it's just the same principle okay so now we're, we're going to start the generator first things first you can start it with a hydraulic accumulator in the Kongsberg simulator you just switch it on start so we have, we have before starting you have already checked all systems manual stop so if i start it here so as you can see it changes colors dropping the hydro hydraulic accumulator pressure lower so meaning if if that black um, pump or the the sign it changes color meaning it's it, it's it's running see the lift pump is on starting now you have a status of a running then you get a power so initially that kicks in with power now let's let's stop it and use the so there are three methods to start this one so i'm i'm testing the three methods so you can stop it so it stopped or whichever stop mm -hmm. stopping since you see the dynamics of Kongsberg is that eventually not like other simulators when you click stop automatically all pumps stop it eventually this runs on, on on how many seconds um that's what they say it, it has still revolution so that's why the loop oil pump and the cooling water seawater pump does not eventually stop like in other simulators if you click this one uh the simulators will have the simulators will have a very high dynamic where it will not automatically stop it waits for the revolution to stop for the main engine for the for the emergency generator so it has very high dynamics for explanations so another one is you can start it with a battery so you just click here that's to start with an emergency battery let's just start it there okay again uh, once you started it you will see that the lift pump started it's now getting in power here n stands for the revolution v stands for the voltage so L stands for the level, F stands for the frequency. So starting power. Now you can see the dynamics again. Dynamics are so very high because um, you can explain that eventually it needs power. Um, some gen diesel generators now subject air system. So eventually it turns the turbocharger. 
So next, again, uh, we have already started it. Now I'm going to put power on this one. I'm going to connect it to the bus bar. This is starting from code chip. Okay. So I'm going now to uh again you can you can go directly to 070 here. Just click that one. So as you can see, if in the electrical power plant, if that is black, meaning it has not yet started. But this one when it turns to yellow, meaning it's already been started, but it's not yet connected to the emergency the emergency bus bar now what are the parts of oh let's let's stick with this one first so in the electrical power plant you have it's just the same thing what you have on the main this is this in engine control is just the same thing as this one so if you click here auto it becomes auto it's just the same thing they have just an elect excerpt ex, um, a link to that module 70 and module 78 so now a voltage control this is the excitation current to the alternator creating electricity okay so that's that's creating electricity there giving charge so as you can see it raises the frequency now i have 60 i can lower a little reducing it 60 volts and okay now it's now 61 69 you can there are two types you can do this one. You can put it in auto control or you can go directly on unbreaker because eventually there's nothing. There's no power yet. So you can, there's no parallel method, no synchronization because it's a single generator. So what you need to do, just put it in. And eventually I stands for current and E stands for the um, active power. And that's the reactive power that's the multiplied with the power factor so we have already switched in the emergency generator now i will click on auto as you can see what i told you that this one is linked to md70 if you switch that one it also switches now you have a status of green here meaning that the breaker is already been connected we'll go to the emergency bus button. emergency switchboard i mean so the emergency switchboard um you have feeder panels and you have an emergency transformer for the 220 volts it's just it's just the same loop now um, emergency switchboard steering gear number two fire pumps everything is here so you can switch it on all in because the emergency generator can carry that one Don't, even the elevator is also here port lifeboat starboard lifeboat all regarding emergency starting so generator number one and number two some generators uh, some ships only build with generator number one pump pumps so started so other ships go for both generators. This one has um, diesel generator one and two, preheating and everything. So possible to start the generator with the switchboard. Okay. Now once you have switched all um, feeder panels, so what's the part of this emergency switchboard? You have a resistance, so that's for testing for earth earthing. Uh, checking for that one for forty. You have an AC voltage for the volt voltmeter as you can see here now um what i do is i this is an emergency transformer so that's a three phase 90 kilovolt ampere primary voltage is 440 second meaning that the 440 is being converted into 220 that's how yeah, every time you see a data you just click on it and eventually you can you can check what's inside okay now i'm going to switch in all generators and on except for the spare nautical distribution radar radio lifeboat dc 24 volts lightning so now you you will have alert okay uh so that's that's primarily it the emergency transformers so um we, we will be working with the emergency transformer systems and the emergency switchboards ensuring that just 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 ensure that during starting of emergency, the testing of emergency generators or switchboards and everything, it must be very, very, you have to be very familiar with the system. Okay, so as you can see, it's connected to the battery charger. Now it's charging the battery, it's going to a loop and everything. So um, I think we have already discussed about emergency generators and the next episode, we're going to switch on the requirements on, on running now the diesel generator.
So it's going to be a long, long, longer topic. So thank you very much. So again, we are Integrated Maritime. We're just here to help you um, develop more skills regarding competency. Always remember that familiarization, familiarity of the simulator will lead you to, to the application of, of what you are learning in school, on the training centers, and, and just just look into how to navigate this simulator and eventually you you will see that learning through it and that's why we're we're incorporating it with solas and stcw and everything so that you will know that your competencies and eventually this is included in your competencies when starting the emergency generator this is included in your job a support engineer second engineer third. so very very important even even in the ratings department they should know how to start an emergency generator so thank you very much for listening. This is Integrated Maritime, and my name is Efren de la Serna. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and have a great day.